So we're going to now look at what happens when you're dealing with probability ranges where you can't really use the calculator and you'll see why in part B of the question. We can't really use the calculator. So get those probability tables with you ready to go. A spinner is designed so that the probability it lands on red is 0 0.3. Jane has 12 spins. Find the probability that Jane obtains at least five reds. So if x is landing on red, x is landing on red, then we would say that x is going to be binomially distributed. What should be the things that go inside my distribution brackets? 12 and 0 0.3. 12 and 0 0.3. Often in the question, there is a mark reserved for writing this thing down. So please don't skip this. This has a mark often reserved for writing it down. And then it says, we want to find the probability, so I'm instantly going to write this capital T, that Jane obtains at least five reds. So I'm going to have X and five, and we need to think about what symbol goes in there. More than or equal to five. At least five means it could be five, six, seven, all the way up to 12. Now, if you have a graphics calculator, you could just put in the lower boundary is five and the upper boundary is 12. If you don't, you would do one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to four, okay? I'm going to use my graphics calculator and I'm just, just gonna do between five and 12. And we should get this. 0.2763. No matter which way you go about that, you should come up with that thing that you've got there. Okay? That's the easy part of the question. Why can't you do what? So let's have a look. Let's talk about what's going to happen in this one. Jane decides to use this spinner <coughs> for a class competition. She wants the probability of winning a prize to be less than 0.05. Maybe she wants to fix it so that she's not giving out too many prizes and she runs out of money because she's bought too many prizes, okay? So she only wants the probability of winning a prize to be less than 0.05. Each member of the class will have 12 spins and the number of reds will be recorded. Find how many reds are needed to win the prize. So just think about what's happening here. To play this game, you spin it 12 times. If you get a certain number of reds, you win a prize. We want the probability of winning a prize to be less than 0.05. So I'm going to do this first one. I'm going to try and I'm going to structure this first one. And the second one, we might get a bit more support from you. So I want the probability that when I spin this spinner, and I get at least a certain number of reds, meaning I win a prize. Let's just pause there for a second. This is the probability that I win a prize, that x is greater than or equal to a certain number of reds on the spinner. Let's say that the number was six. If I rolled the, the if I did the spinner, and I got seven, I would win a prize. Eight, I would win a prize. Five, I would not win a prize because we're saying that R would be six. I want this thing here to be what? What do I want? The, I want it to be less than 0 0.05. So I want to find out what is this value of R that will make the probability of winning the prize less than 0.05. What questions do we have about this setup that we've got here? Is that okay? Okay. So what we're going to try and do now is translate this into symbols that we normally can use, right? I don't think we've used this symbol in the calculator or in the, um, in the tables. So instead, I want to think about what does greater than or equal to R mean? Well, it could be R. What would be the one after R? R plus one, it could be R plus two, all the way up to the greatest number of spins that we're doing, which is 12. So how could I rewrite the probability that X is greater than or equal to R 
just using my less than or equal to signs. Good, one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to r minus one. r minus one and below are the ones that I'm removing. One represents all of the things that we've got here. Now, I'm going to rearrange this, because I, I can't type this onto my calculator. So I'm going to rearrange this and make this thing the subject. Okay, I'm going to rearrange it and make this thing the subject. So I'm going to add it to this side, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.05. I wrote that down wrong from the other side. So 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.95. And on this side, I have the probability that x is less than or equal to r minus 1. So I've made this thing the subject now, and now I think I can actually find this out. I want to find out whatever this thing is here that makes its probability go bigger than 0 0.95. It's switched to 0 0.95 because of my rearranging that I've got here. And this is where I want to use the tables. The tables are the best thing for this. So let's just quickly remind ourselves, we have 12 and 0.3. And we're going to try and find out the one that goes bigger than 0 0.95. So you're going to go to your table. So this is for 10. Let's go to the next page. There is 12. There is 0 0.3. As I read down this list, I want to find out the first one that goes bigger than 0 0.95. Ah, there it is. So it's 6. OK, so six is the one that goes. Is it six? No, six is the first one that goes above 0 0.95. That's the first one that goes bigger than 0 0.95. So I'm going to go back to this page and I'm now going to say that actually the thing that's bigger than 0 0.95 is the probability that X is less than or equal to six. And I'm going to write in brackets that this is from the tables. This is the first thing here that is bigger than 0.95. Just leave that, yeah? This is the first one that is bigger than 0.95. Now, I've got these two statements here. From these two statements, you can tell this and this must be the same as each other. <coughs> Agreed? Yeah, Meaning that r minus 1, you should write from tables if it's something that's not obvious, r minus 1 must be the same as 6 meaning that the number of reds that you need to win is seven. Okay? So how many reds are needed to win the prize? Seven reds are needed. Now, I'm going to just show you why this works on the calculator, okay? We're saying that it's got to be greater than or equal to a certain value. Um, let me just draw this again. So I'm going to go back to the graphics calculator and show you why I think it will be a little bit better on the table. So, here, I don't know if you can see this that clearly, but I've got that the lower is 5 and the upper is 12. So I'm currently saying greater than or equal to 5. The probability of it being greater than or equal to 5 is 27.6. So she's going to have to give a prize away 27% of the time. That's too high. Now I'm going to change it to 6. And she has to give a prize away 11.78% of the time. And now this is the one that we're hoping is going to be less than 5%. Yeah. And it's only 3.86% of the time that she has to give the prize away. So you could use your graphics calculator to try and come up with that and try out lots of different values. But the foolproof method is going to be using this. Now, if you don't have the graphics calculator, it's a bit harder because you can't do the upper and lower boundaries in quite the same way as you can do here. We're going to try one more example like this before the end of the lesson. This time, though... It's also going to be very worded. Whoa. It's about passing exams. Yep. So, at Morpeth University, <coughs> students have 20 exams at the end of the year. All students pass each individual exam with probability 0.45. I mean, this is kind of nonsense, because obviously you don't have a set probability rate, but it's, it's fun, okay? Students are only allowed to continue into the next year if they pass some minimum of exams 
out of the 20. What do the university administrators set this minimum number such, the such that the probability of continuing to the next year is at least 90%? So there's a lot of information here. What I want to do is start pulling some of it out so that we can start to agree on certain things. So you have 20 exams and the probability of passing is 0.45. So if x is the number of exams you pass, or a student passes, x will be binomially distributed with 20 and 0 0.45. We need to think, what is the minimum number of exams such that the probability of continuing to the next year is <coughs> at least 90%? Let's say, let A be the minimum number of exams to pass to continue. Let A be the minimum number of exams you need to pass to continue. So what are we going to write in here? We want the probability that the number of exams you pass being, so if A is the minimum number, what's going to go inside here? Greater than or equal to a. We're saying that if the number of exams that you pass is greater than or equal to a certain number of exams, we want it to be at least 90%. So I want it to be at least 90%. Technically, at least should have that in there as well. But we know from the table they never have anything that's got exactly 0 0.9, but technically it is this one that we've got here. Let's just say that one more time. We're saying that the number of exams that you pass, if it's greater than or equal to a particular threshold, A, then that is passing, and we want that to be at least 90%. <coughs> so we're going to do the same job of rearranging these kinds of things that we've got here. Greater than or equal to A, well, that's going to be A, A plus 1, A plus 2, all the way up to 20. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus the probability that X is less than or equal to what am I removing from this list? A minus 1. And I want that to be greater than or equal to 0 0.9. So I'm going to rearrange this now. I'm going to put that to the other side. So that's the probability that x is less than or equal to A minus 1. And I'm going to do 1 minus 0 0.9, which is 0 0.1. So this time, I'm going to be looking for the first probability that is less than or equal to 0 0.1. If you want, you could write it this way, right? You could flip the whole thing. So it's a little bit easier to see that we're saying we want this thing to be less than 0 0.1. So go to your tables. Let's see if you can find it in your tables. We want n to be 20. Pardon? We want the probability to be 0 0.45 and n to be 20. So I'm just going to quickly go over to the... Have you got your green tables to have a look at them? See if you can locate where that should be. So, 0 0.45 is the penultimate column. And we're looking here. We want to find out the last one that is less than 0 0.1. I think it's this one here, right? I think it's 5. Because 6 is greater than 0 0.1, 5 is the one that is less than 0 0.1. So that means the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 is the one that's less than or equal to 0 0.1. So comparing these things together, a minus 1 must be equal to 5, meaning that a is equal to 6. So The minimum number of exams to pass is six. 
And I'll show you that it works by putting it onto the graphics. So we want this to be greater than or equal to 0 0.9. Well, let's say that it was you only needed to pass five exams. If you only needed to pass five out of the 20, can you see I've got five and 20? Then 98% of students would be passing. Too many students would be continuing to the next year. If I change it to six, you get 94%. If I change it to seven, though, only 87% of people are passing the exams to go to the next year and that's not high enough. They wanted it to be at least 90%. So I'm gonna ask you to now have a go at exercise 6D, question seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If there are any of them that you find difficult, please rewatch this, and then we will, at the start of next lesson, we will go over any of the ones that you found tricky, okay? <laughs>